Well, you know, the thing so is, though, is like your story is so um, extensive that it's hard to capture in a single interview, like a hour and a half interview, two hour interview. Right. Oh, no, it's yeah, just yeah. so much into there. And a lot of times people aren't asking the right questions. They just asking. So what happened with you and Joe? And and, and it's like kind of like the surface level response. It's not like an in-depth, like yeah, asking the that's right, right because, because usually Because usually they don't do the, the, the history. Or they don't do their journalism and go inside and find out, you know, what's the word in the streets? What's the word, you know what I'm saying? Uh, behind, uh, the, you know, the terror squad, sub-terror squad members, ex-terror squad members. They don't do that. So that's part of journalism. Well, that's people, when you what go people don't do understand is like when I interview someone, I literally watch every single interview that they've done and related interviews, right? That's how you, you're able to, to really fact check and, and extract the information. So people really just thought, oh, you just on Cuban's nuts and you just get, get his side. But <laughs> Yeah, but what I told you, what I told you, I told you, you asked me. What, what would you do? Uh, how you would feel about an interview with Joe? Right? No, I didn't even ask that. You, you said, told me one day if you're lucky oh, right. and you get to interview I Joe, I, ask him, ask him that. So you said that right off the bat, and I was right, like, oh right, wow, right. Without, and then it's funny. It's funny. The next episode, motherfuckers, uh, on the comment section talking about, you know, why don't you interview? He only he's biased. He only interviews Cuban. My nigga, you don't think that Panda would uh, love to interview Joe, and probably not even to, you know. Respectfully, respectfully. I think, uh, like I said, I don't like telling my story and want you to feel the same anger or, or make you feel a certain way about the nigga I'm telling the truth about. Now, you know, you might think it's derogatory, it's shit that I'm saying about him or, or you know, saying too, too extreme. No. Stand by everything I said or to the point. Like to the point, to the detail of it. So that's why maybe I'm a little like, not believable a little bit because it's like, I don't believe he's like that. I'm telling you. No, I mean, well, when I'm talking about description, though, I'm talking about description. Uh, when I describe uh, situations he's done, you know what I'm saying? They think I'm making shit up. And it's like, okay. That's why he been catching motherfuckers forever because he's like, you don't believe it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Before it was like, yo, nigga Joe, you got power to black belt. You got power. I'm telling you, I seen it. I think that, that you think of him too high. You don't got no. You do the Chris Lighties. You do the Owls. You do the fucking Red Alerts. I don't know how he started. I'm trying to tell you, he been had that. It's just that, um, you know, um, he wants to be, uh, in this situation, I think he wants to be looked at as he, he's, uh, he's not that guy that did that. He wants to keep this on, a, you know, that cop Negro. You know, another thing that stood out to me was that nobody else wanted to talk about it. Like, that's, yeah, I hate that bothered me. I, right after I interviewed you, right, I reached out to Tony Sunshine. His manager had reached out to me, like, within a week of Goya saying, just watch. They're going to reach out to you. They're going to try to... See. That nigga 50, 50 talking about the nigga who shot him, nigga. Nine times, nigga. And I can't say my story. What kind of shit is that? Right. He reached out to me and was already checking the temperature and everything, right? And I was already trying to get the interview with Tony. I was like, yo, Tony, do the interview. And he's like, he don't want to be negative. He don't want to talk about that stuff. He don't want to. I reached out to Prospect, reached out to Getty, reached out to all everyone that I could possibly get in touch with with it, with uh, Terror Squad. Nobody wants to talk about this topic. Nobody wants to talk about what really happened or anything. And it's it's a hip hop question mark, a big question but mark they don't that get fans that, they really want to know. They, they think what I'm looking for happened? attention. They right. think I'm just. This is the only thing I'm going to get known for. They, that's what they, they're making it look like. So it looks like. I'm the starving artist that, that, that you know, has no uh, other way to make it except, you know, to bash Joe. That's what they want. They want, it, they want that to be the, the center of why I'm doing my thing. Instead of saying, instead of saying, yo, this nigga here is a real one. That he, he just telling this truth because. I don't know about anyone else, but if no one wants to talk about this, is that not enough reason for you to be like, I wonder why? Exactly. You know and I mean? that is so what I'm trying to tell you. Be more excited because that's the excitement. You see that the more they try to fucking suppress the truth, suppress something that needs to come out by the God, by the will of God, the but, more popcorn go you should order, the more fucking uh, papaya juice you should get. And that's that, it. That's when, because that's when the movie is classic. That's when this nigga here 
is going to make you proud. That's when you're going to see that it's not just about me and what I went through that day in Jimmy's. It's about me, my whole life. That day on the boat, that day when I was born in my mom's poop, when I landed out here, when I took that first breath. That's what it is. When it comes to Cuba. Now, Pun was here. Pun was here. He would have told you the same shit from his fucking view. We meet together. That was where we was Voltron. And that's why the energy, you know what I'm saying, um, and I got to say it plain. Me and Pun was the energy behind the whole terror squad when we changed that. More more him, he showed y'all. But the relationship me and that nigga had from the fucking streets coming up, nigga, is what we put and we gave to Joe. That's why he, he fucking was uh, the fluorescent beluga that, you know, the, that, that, that got the, you know, that inspiration again. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying, from, from writing his material to, to, to coaching, to renaming, to making his fucking label for him. You know, I could say I was part of, uh, you know, um, the reason that he got it done. But my brother definitely was the major part. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Then seeing niggas don't like me talking like this, but these are facts, right? These are facts when you put it together. The universe don't lie. Because what the fuck am I doing in Cuba? I'm not supposed to ever leave Cuba. And I leave and go to the Bronx. When I'm 15, I mean, you know, uh, a best friend of mine. That becomes the fucking number one hip hop Latino next to me, my brother. Nobody, I mean, we love hip hop before that, all that. You know, we love hip hop. But how the fuck we do it? Like he did it. And he's my best friend. You know what I'm saying? And we started, we started right there together. I'm the one who named the fucking the crew and everything with him. me and him. What happened to a nigga a thousand miles away in Cuba? So things is destiny. And that's what I'm saying when it comes around like this. And usually, Usually the greatest ones, the greatest stories that, that are real true stories, you know, uh, you know, the, the opposition or the resistance to make to, for it to come out is, is, is heavy. It's real heavy. You know what I'm saying? It's, and, and, and that's why you got to get excited because we got to know that, yo, it's going to happen because the more you do it, the more you try to press it, the more it's going to happen. And that's what's happened, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, at the end of the day, like I said, this is grassroots. This is still the same story. It's just that this story never got told the right way. And that's that's we one touched- thing That's one thing that I, I want to highlight, right? Because people are going to try to run with a narrative. Like, oh, how did you not know the in-depth story? But, like, nobody really covered it like that. Nobody knows nothing anyway. Right. Nobody knows shit. How they know more than me? I'm the one that... No, yeah, but what I'm, I'm saying, though, is, like, you know, back in the day... We got the news really late because it was in the magazines, right? But even the magazines wasn't covering later. it to the extent of like what really happened. No, no but that you got you got Angie, remember? You got Angie the interview, you know, Fat Joe, and, and so. But that's inside. just one side. I know that, that's what I'm and it's saying. like, and during but that, even then, even then, the Nori, remember when Nori's happening now? Uh, Angie was the first one to give him the, you know, and said. He put people at ease. But during that time, right, like you had to listen to the clip to the radio while it was happening to hear it because it wasn't like you had to clip and you could replay it. And you know what I mean? Like, so if you didn't catch it at that time, doesn't it was you wasn't going to know. Yeah. So yeah. there's just so much that, you know, in. But I don't, in, I don't like the fact that I'm being made an example. You don't make examples of me. If I choose. If you make an example of me, watch the example I'm gonna make of you. That's that's basically how I live my life. You know, I've never been here to make an example, especially a, a dirty example. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that's what's been done here. You know what I'm saying? Um, throwing the dirt that doesn't even belong. It doesn't even mind. mine. The niggas think they can just kick dirt that's not mine, so they can, so they can look, look dirty. They can they fabricate lies so I can look like a liar or a drunk. Or, they try and do everything. They tried everything. And they still can't fuck with us. Because we come out of nowhere. <laughs> remember? We came out of nowhere. My Hennessy in the morning. Remember what he said? <laughs> He's a bum. Remember the bum? Out of nowhere. Looking like motherfucking Mitch from fucking Rocky's trailer right now. We come out of nowhere. And we tell a story again. Because the story always gonna have different, you know, uh, energy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just the energy I put into it. 
And I do have both. They, they, they're real. I take that shit as, as funny only when I'm laughing with it. <laughs> if I'm not laughing, then it's going to be a fucking problem. That's what it is. So you got to be careful how you tell a story. Don't even, matter of fact, don't even tell a story. Let me tell it. Because if you get something wrong, like y'all whole been doing, motherfuckers would be, you know, saying some stories that never happened. And then, you know, 20 years later, they'll be, I'll be finding out about it. Like, that's why the fuck reason certain people just don't, you know, they, they just have certain disgust to me or they think I did something that I never did. So by the time I, I hear that, it's like, you know, I can be everywhere at once. But uh, don't be pussy, man. You see what I'm saying? Like, I've never been that pussy nigga. I've never been that punk. I've never been that, 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 this you. I've never been that, uh, you know, all those words that niggas love for me to be because that's who they are. Guess what? I'm the opposite. I'm the real thing. Cause I lived it. I walk it. You know I'm saying, and y'all didn't want to listen to me when I was telling it to you in a certain way like this, right? But let me act crazy. Let me act like I'm a fucking drug, right? Let me act like I'm fucking, you know, uh, uh, something is wrong with me. Like I'm fucking, uh, like fucking Stephen, Stephen uh, Marbury. I'm always throwing fucking powder on himself. Let me act like I'm fucking losing my mind. Watch how many y'all tune in. And that's what I. That's the way it worked out because that's the way that it was planned. If anything, our plan was that. Because once I see y'all niggas like this, oh, hey, or haters, tuning in, oh, yeah, I'm going to give you a show. But just know, y'all watch me, but y'all heard me. So now we're back to it. Now we're back to Cuban Link, the artist. Now we're back to this right here, which is, let's talk that rap shit. Let's talk that hip hop shit. Let's do what we need to do as musicians, as, as real artists, real MCs. That's what I, that's the conversation I want to get into because that's what I love. That's what all of this was done for. You know what I'm saying? For the love of music. Right. For, for motherfuckers, you know, to let me do what I escaped Cuba for. Well, my you know what I'm saying? What, what, what I was destined to do, which was, you know what I'm saying? Uh, get these motherfucking poetry out here and put them in a way that I, you know what I'm saying? The way I, only I, I could do it and let you taste some real shit. And that's all, man. That's all it is uh, at the end of the day. It's harder than that because look at this 20 fucking something years and somebody is still fucking afraid to let me go out and, and, and let my music be heard. You know, so uh, it's okay. It's going to get heard. It's going to get heard. 